Imagine a fighter jet that is smart, cheap to run, and built by a country known for solid engineering. You might expect dozens of air forces to want it. Yet for years, the modern Swedish fighter has sold slowly compared with rivals from the United States and Europe. That odd gap raises a simple question. Why are powerful nations often choosing other jets, even when the Swedish plane looks like a smart choice on paper? This script will walk through the answer step by step in plain words. Before we dive deeper, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to your go-to place for real, simple, and bold military tech explanations every week. The Swedish jet we mean is the Gripen family. It began life as a small and useful fighter that could do many jobs. Over time, the maker upgraded it into a modern version with new radar, better engines, and new weapons. The updated model aims to give big capability at a lower price than the top Western fighters. It was also designed to be easy to maintain and cheap to operate. That pitch should be strong for countries with smaller budgets. Yet sales have often fallen short of expectations. To understand why, we need to look at five big reasons that work together. First, the Gripen uses important parts that come from other countries. The newest Gripen uses an American engine. That gives the United States a say over possible sales because export rules apply. When a jet contains foreign-made parts like engines, the country that supplied those parts can block or slow a sale for political reasons. That risk makes some buyers nervous. They do not want their choice of fighter to depend on a third country that might change its mind later. This real supply chain link has been pointed to as a major constraint on sales. Because of such controls, potential buyers sometimes prefer jets that have fewer foreign ties. A maker that can offer a plane with parts it fully controls can promise deliveries and upgrades with fewer political strings attached. That appeals strongly to countries that worry about sudden export bans or future politics. Second, the politics of alliances matter more than price. Many countries pick their main fighter not just for the plane itself, but for the larger political and military ties that come with the purchase. Buying jets from the United States or France usually brings deep ties. Those ties can include long-term maintenance help, better training options, shared weapons, and easier access to spare parts. They can also include access to sensitive technologies and integration with allied networks. In practice, this means a small or medium-sized country might choose a fighter that keeps its relationship with a major power strong. For reasons like this, some countries have favored American or European jets, even when the Swedish option looked competitive on price. Third, buyer needs have changed. Over the last decade, many air forces began to aim for the latest kinds of capability, especially stealth and a strong sensor and data network. The most talked about example is the fifth generation family of plane, which emphasize low observability and deep systems integration. Those jets are expensive, but many nations see them as the future, worth the high cost for the edge they may give in a fight. The Gripen is highly capable and modern in many ways, but it is not a stealth design in the way fifth generation jets are. For a buyer focused on stealth and long-term future proofing, the Gripen can look like a compromise. That shifts the market toward the priciest platforms. As nations pour more money into modernizing, Fewer of them settle on the middle-tier fighter. This trend has narrowed the pool of buyers for planes like the Gripen. Fourth, the market is crowded, and the competitors have big advantages. The United States, France, the United Kingdom, and lately China and Russia bring large packages that can be hard to match. These packages include finance deals, local assembly, political guarantees, and bundled weapons and sensors from the seller nation. They also often come with a long record of export sales, and that track record matters. A buyer can list airplanes that a neighbor also flies or that are already supported at deep levels by allies. That reduces risk. Large defense exporters can also make deals that include loans and credit, or production lines that create local jobs. Those offset packages can tip the scales, especially in countries that need economic benefits alongside security upgrades. Sweden and its industry have offered offset and local work, but matching the scale and depth of offers from big defense exporters is a tough challenge. Fifth, industrial scale and perceived risk are real. Saab is an innovative firm and Swedish engineering is strong. 
Still, Saab is smaller than the major defense groups in France, the United States, and the United Kingdom. When a country plans to operate hundreds of fighters, it judges not only the jet but the supplier's ability to be a long-term partner. Questions arise about future upgrades, spare parts supply, and how well that supplier will sustain the program if world events shift. Some buyers assume the big suppliers can keep programs running for decades with more certainty. That perception puts smaller makers at a disadvantage, even when their plane is technically attractive. To make this concrete, let us look at some recent deals and outcomes. In the last few years, Saab has had notable wins and notable frustrations. For example, Thailand agreed to buy a small batch of Gripen jets. That sale shows the plane can still find buyers and that Saab can win in some markets. This deal was announced publicly and includes support and training. It is a meaningful order, but it is not a large fleet purchase compared to big programs elsewhere. At the same time, a number of earlier export hopes melted away or slowed. Saab leaders have publicly said they are frustrated by the slow pace of orders in certain periods. That frustration is not just about pride. It shows that even with a good plane, closing large contracts in a crowded market is very hard. Another example of the Gripen's role in the market shows up in Central Europe. The Czech Republic moved to extend the lease of older Gripen jets as a stopgap measure while it plans for a longer-term replacement. The lease extension helps the Czech Air Force stay ready even as it invests in future jets from other producers. This kind of short-term use shows the Gripen can fill gaps and provide reliable service. At the same time, it highlights how buyers often use the Gripen as a bridge rather than as their final choice. Brazil looks like another important case. Saab partnered with a major Brazilian company to build Grapens in Brazil. Local production and transfer of work can be a major selling point for some buyers. The Brazilian tie shows how partnerships can open doors. Yet large follow-up orders still depend on politics, budgets, and complex government decisions. Those moves take time and are not guaranteed. The existence of a local production line helps, but it does not remove all obstacles. Buyers often run long decision processes. Choosing a new fighter jet is one of the most political and costly defense decisions a nation can make. Officials worry about sudden supply cutoffs, future upgrades, training of pilots and technicians, and how easy it will be to buy weapons and spare parts five and 10 years from now. If a plane depends on foreign parts that might be blocked, that is a major worry. If a vendor country is neutral or non-aligned, some buyers might see that as an advantage and others as a disadvantage. The point is that technical capability is only one part of the decision. Political confidence and long-term industrial ties often matter more. Another key theme is economics. Price at purchase is important, but a wise buyer looks at life cycle cost. That includes fuel, maintenance, spare parts, upgrades, and how long the aircraft will remain relevant. The Gripen often scores well on life cycle cost. It is designed to be low cost to run. Yet the initial market has also shifted toward jets that promise future capability leaps. Many buyers have been willing to pay more upfront for what they see as a longer term strategic advantage. In other words, lower operating cost is attractive, but sometimes not enough to beat the draw of a top tier, higher priced jet that promises stealth and advanced networked systems. Saab has tried to close the gap by offering local partnerships and industrial cooperation. The plan is to build factories, transfer knowledge, and create jobs for the buyer country. That offer can be decisive. The production line in Brazil is a real example. Still, not every buyer can or will accept deep industrial links. Local politics, domestic industrial capacity, or national security questions can limit how much transfer is allowed. Also, some buyers want the prestige or the full guarantee that comes with major allies. For them, the industrial offer does not replace geopolitical ties. Modern air combat is about more than the plane itself. It is about sensors, data, weapons, and the ability to link into wider systems. Buyers want platforms that will easily integrate with the weapons and command networks they already have or plan to acquire. The Gripen is modular and was designed with openness in mind. That is a strength. But in some markets, buyers prefer the full package from a single powerful ally. 
That package can include advanced weapons that only the big exporters can easily provide. Again, this tilts decisions toward the dominant exporters. Timing is also a factor. Some countries need jets quickly. Saab sometimes sells in smaller batches with longer delivery schedules. Bigger exporters can often deliver larger fleets faster thanks to larger factories and deeper industrial supply chains. A buyer in a hurry will pick the provider that can meet the schedule. That has happened in several procurement programs where urgency met supply. Global politics plays a harsh role. Consider nations under sanctions or those with tense relations with major powers. For these countries, the Gripen may look attractive because Sweden is not always aligned with the same powerful blocs. But the presence of foreign components that are controlled by countries with strict export rules can complicate options. The buyer must weigh whether the jet will remain fully serviceable in the face of shifting diplomatic winds. So what can Saab do to sell more Gripens? There are ordinary steps and bold moves. One ordinary step is to keep offering local production and real offsets. Buyers love jobs and technology transfer. Saab can continue to deepen local partnerships and show real local benefit. A bolder step is to reduce foreign dependence on critical parts where possible. If Saab can increase the share of components that come from friendly or neutral suppliers, that reduces the risk of export restrictions. That will take time and money, but it could pay off. Saab can also focus on niche buyers where the Gripen's strengths matter most. These include countries with medium budgets that need a capable multi-role jet and that do not prioritize stealth. In these markets, life cycle cost and operational simplicity can beat the draw of the stealth fighters. Finally, Saab can use its reputation for innovation and connectivity. Market the Gripen not just as a plane, but as a software and sensor platform that can evolve. Some buyers will like a plane that can be upgraded over time at lower cost. At the time of this video, sales of the Gripen continue but remain modest compared with the largest exporters. Small but meaningful contracts show the plane still has a place. The Thailand deal and other agreements prove buyers still choose the Gripen in real cases. The check lease extension shows the plane can serve as a bridge while countries prepare larger purchases. And the Brazilian production tie proves that local industrial partnerships can open doors. Those are bright signs. Yet the market is changing fast and competition is fierce. The Gripen faces strong headwinds that go beyond price or performance. For buyers, the lesson is simple. The best fighter for a country depends on many things beyond raw numbers. Geopolitics, supply chains, industrial policy, and long-term strategy matter. A plane that looks cheaper upfront can carry hidden risks. A plane that costs more may buy political guarantees and long-term support. For global air power, we see a split. Some nations will adopt the latest stealth jets and form tight ties with the big exporters. Others will choose practical, lower-cost jets that meet regional needs. The Gripen fits that second path. It is a strong tool for many missions. It will remain an important option as long as Saab keeps investing in upgrades and local partnerships. So why is no one buying modern Swedish fighter jets in vast numbers? The short answer is that several forces are at work at the same time. Foreign parts and export controls, alliance politics, changing buyer appetite for stealth, stiff competition from larger exporters with deep packages, and perceptions about industrial scale, all combine to shrink the market for mid-tier fighters. That does not mean the Gripen is a failure. It means the market has moved in several directions that challenge Saab to adapt. The plane still finds buyers and still shines in many roles. Saab must keep evolving its offer and explaining the full value it provides. If it succeeds, we may see a second wave of buyers who value clever design, low operating cost, and solid industrial partnerships. Fighter selection goes beyond technology and defense. Included are politics, economy, technology, and national story. In Swedish Gripen, threads unite. The world will weigh cost, capability, politics, and independence in future deals. Like this account of Swedish fighter jets' commercial struggles? Like, share, and subscribe for more full, honest reviews.